Hello and welcome to the 30th Easy Excel tutorial part of EasyProgramming.net. Today I want us to do something new with something we already know. We're going to create a simple order form just to see how dynamic Excel is and how it can be. Uh, what you have here in front of you is a simple order form. Uh, on the left hand side it looks like a basic invoicing type uh, form and on the right hand side we have a little catalog here. We want the customer to be able to click on one of these items and the order form will automatically grab the price. It'll take your in, it'll uh, take your the quantity that you input, grab the subtotal, and then add it to the grand total. Right, pretty much any order form. I'm sure you've seen this on the web if you've ever bought anything online anywhere. So a quick demo of what it will look like. Let's say I want to buy speakers. Just by looking at here, we know the speakers are 65.87. And it grabs 6587 dynamically based on the formula I have here. Let's say I want three of these. And it grabs the subtotal by multiplying, again, a preset formula. And if you notice here, the grand total also increased. So if I want four, the total increases. Let's say I want 10. I want to get greedy. There you go. Easy, right? And we want to be able, we want the users to be able to do this for a number of items. Let's say I need two headphones. The reason that didn't work is because I didn't copy the formula down. Autofill, remember that. There you go. So some of the things you'll need to know for this is uh, drop-down validation. Feel free to check out that tutorial. I cover how to do validation in depth. Uh, VLOOKUP and or index match. Uh, for the purpose of this little order form, I will cover both. I will do half and half. And you will need to know how to do auto sum in the case of grand total, which is really not hard, which is uh, one of the first tutorials that I ever did. And subtotal is just multiplication, you don't have to know anything about this. And this little column here has no formulas because it's just a little input of how many you want. So let's practice. Okay, so as we saw in the completed order form, we want the item to be something that the customer selects from a drop down list. Right? We don't want them to type things in because they can make mistakes, they can make typos. And for the rest of our formula to work, we need them to be exact. So I'm going to go up to the data tab. We'll do data validation. Again, remember to watch my data validation drop down list tutorial where I go over in depth how to do this if you have any questions. So I'll select this little here. Uh, it automatically does uh, absolute referencing. We'll do OK. There we go. In this drop-down list, I have everything I need. So if I try to do uh, controller, it's not going to work. This is value doesn't match the data validation restrictions defined for this cell. So cancel. Let's say I want monitor. Now we want this order form to grab the cost for monitor, which is one twenty nine ninety nine, automatically without without um, the customer or anyone else interfering intervening. So we'll do VLOOKUP. Um, Please watch my VLOOKUP tutorial to learn how to do VLOOKUP correctly. I go over in depth what these parameters are. So the lookup value we want is A3, not the word monitor. The table array we're looking at is here. Remember to do absolute referencing. We want column 2 and the range lookup will do 0 because we want an exact lookup because we don't want any other variations of the word monitor. There we go. It grabbed 129.99. Quantity. Let's say I want two, and then we want to grab the subtotal, which you can use a formula or it's simple multiplications. We'll do um, B3 times C3. There we go. 25998. Right. Easy. And the grand total we want to do is the sum. Uh, we should also look at my auto sum tutorial. So I'm just going to grab a bunch of these. I'm going to say uh, they can enter 20, 20. We want a 23 because it starts at 3. Uh, 20 items in this order form. And 259.98, that's grand total. Let's copy the formula down. Uh, I don't need monitor again. We'll copy the rest of the formulas down. 1. I'll show you how to get rid of this NAs later. So we'll do monitor. Let's do hard drive. Look, it grabbed the 49.99 from the hard drive automatically. And let's say I want 5 hard drives. Grab the subtotal and not base the grand total. Easy peasy, right? 
Uh, so we dealt with the little NA. I'm going to show you a little trick to get rid of these errors. And it's a function called if error. And it takes two parameters. Uh, the first one is value and the value of error. Uh, the first parameter we want is the actual formula itself, which is the VLOOKUP. And the error and the value we want to input if there is an error, I'm just going to do a double quotes just to say that I don't want anything there. And I'll close it up. This one's really easy, not doing a full tutorial on if error. You can look it up. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the easiest tutorials there is. So there we go. See the function, the formula exists, but because there is an error, it's displaying nothing. We're going to do the same thing here. If error. Do the formula in the first parameter. Don't need this one. And then nothing as the second parameter because we don't want anything to display. There we go. You don't need an if error here because we're doing uh, validations in these little cells here. So I'll just copy this down up to 10. Get rid of the quantities. That's just uh, some. Let's just do a um, few more. We'll do flash drive. We'll do mouse. Let me also do uh, currency so that it makes sense. Same thing here. Currency. There we go. Let's do speakers. Let's say I want. Next, I want a power source. Not another power source, a graphics card. And keyboard. You see how it's dynamically put up pulling all these pulling all these numbers. So I'll just do um three, five, let's say I want a lot of speakers, uh two power sources, say four graphics cards, and one keyboard. Let's put this up. And the grand total increased uh, accordingly. And see see the order form right now, it's done. That's all you need to do. Um, <clears throat> the reason I did it until 10 is because I want to show you how to do this with index match as well. So I'm going to move the drop down first here. I'm just going to get rid of the content. I'll select keyboards. Keyboard. There we go. So let's say I want to do a USB cable here. Didn't pull anything over because we need our little formula. So we'll do index. Uh, the array we're looking to grab is this. Absolute referencing, comma. The row number is what we're going to get from match. Uh, please look at my, uh, please watch the index match tutorial that I did uh, last time and just to get an understanding of how the index match works. I go over in depth how it works, what the, each of the components are, and I go over how index and match work separately. So the lookup value we're looking at is this, comma, the lookup array is this, or comma, and it's an exact match, so we'll do zero. Let's close up all the parentheses, just for good practice. And there we go, USB cable is 899. Right. If I go down one, it's going to give me an NA because I didn't do the if error here. So this may be good practice. Just to do, uh, it, it's it's good error handling. You don't want your customer to see NAs or, you know, value or, blah blah blah, showing up, just junk showing up all over. Let's do autocomplete up to twenty one. Look, it disappeared. Say one five. Say I want a textbook, right? Two. I'm just gonna fill some of these out. RAM, fifteen RAMs, you know, whatever that means. Fifteen sticks of RAM. Uh, say I need batteries for my my wireless mouse. So I need four batteries. And I'm just gonna do one more. Say I need a motherboard, right? I need two motherboards. There we go. The grand total updated, and here we have it. It's the order form. It's dynamic. Uh, you can use this to make your life a lot easier. If you have something, 
if you have a table where you need to pull data from all the time, you can set up a predefined order form type form for yourself and grab other predetermined values really easily just by using drop down values. And you can make sure that it's error free because of the validation that we do here and the formulas that we do here. Uh, so if you get anything wrong in your formula, all you have to do is fix it once. Uh, <clears throat> like I did the if error here and then I did the if error in the index match down here. Uh, this type of form you see online a lot. A lot of if you've ever done any shopping online, uh, all those forms pretty much take your input, grab something from a database, and pretty much does the math for you right in front of you. This, this is pretty much the same concept, just a different tool and different way of doing it. You can have this catalog anywhere else. You can have it in, in another worksheet or another workbook as long as you link them correctly. Uh, Whereas uh, on the web, web forms usually use a database somewhere else, a SQL database elsewhere. Uh, it's pretty much the same idea. Easy? Yep. It's exactly the same. Kinda. But, uh, well, if you have any questions about anything that I did, please feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, please watch my other tutorials to learn how I did this. Uh, the VLOOKUP index match. Uh, the data validation drop-down list and even auto sum is helpful. Uh, and please feel free to and please visit my website at easyprogramming.net for more content uh, and stay tuned for more tutorials if you have any suggestions on future tutorials please let me know I'm more than happy to look into them uh, well thanks for watching